Hey, what's up YouTube? This is iPhone Modder here, and I know it's been a super long time since I've talked to you guys, but today was the WWDC of 2013 that Apple hosted in San Francisco, and we're just gonna dive right into that. <laughs> Alright, so this video is just going to cover the new OS X that was announced by Apple. And I do have two other videos that I'm making about the WWDC event today. And I'll put those two links down in the description below once the videos are done. So just give it some time because the videos might take a while to upload. Also, there will be annotations at the end of this video. So then you can just click on and go right to the next video. And those two videos will be about iOS 7. And they will be about the new Macs that were announced, including the Mac Pro and the new MacBook Air. Alright guys, so let's just dive right into this video. So basically, Apple announced this new OS. It's called OS X Maverick. So basically they changed the naming convention to kind of go away from the lion thing, the cats and all that that they were going towards. So basically they're trying to relate their names to California now, which is kind of weird, but I mean Cupertino, which is the Apple headquarters, is actually based in California. So Mavericks apparently is a surfing slash beach area near where Cupertino is, so they decided to name it about that. So that's why it's called OS X Mavericks. So they covered a few features in this OS X Mavericks, and I'm going to try to put some pictures right here for you guys. The first one is called Finder Tab. So essentially what Finder Tabs allow you to do is when you have finder you can make different windows of finder and then put them all into one window and have different tabs so it's essentially like using a web browser or finder so instead of having like 50 different finders with different things you're trying to look for you can just unify it into one window of finder and switch between the tabs so it just makes it a lot easier I don't know why they highlighted this too much because in my opinion it's not that big of a deal but also they said that finder tabs can now be used in full screen mode so now you can use finder in full screen mode which just makes it an overall more elegant way to use it secondly they announced tagging so essentially what tagging allows you to do is when you save a document you can save it to a location which you always do but now you can actually tag it with specific keywords so essentially what you can do is you can make a document that's about apples and then tag it with fruit and then you can make a document that that's about oranges and then tag that with fruit and they can all be stored in different drives different locations but then in finder you can just search for fruit and then it brings up everything with that tag and you can also assign multiple tags to each document so essentially what that allows you to do is if I make a document called Apple I can assign it to trees and fruit so when I search trees it'll come up under apples and then when I search fruit it will also come up under the Apple document so it's just an overall easier way to unify your search results and it basically combines everything into one search result and just makes it a lot easier to find things in your computer another thing they announced that was kind of a big deal was the multiple displays so now they made it a lot more easy to seamlessly integrate multiple displays throughout OS X one of the cool things you can do is actually you can spread your dock throughout the two displays and you can choose where your dock is actually uh, displayed so you don't have to have all of your stuff mainly on the main head display it can actually you can change it depending on which alternate display you'd like to use as your primary display. Also, there's something called panning, which basically allows you to pan between the different uh, multitasking options that you have open. So you can actually make full screen applications in each uh, display. So just to make the overall experience a lot more seamless and basically allow you to utilize each screen and you won't have to feel like it's an alternate display. You can use anything that you would on your original display on the alternate display. So they're just trying to make it a lot easier to further integrate the different displays in Mac OS X. Additionally, Apple TV can also act as a Mac OS X display, which I think is really cool. You can essentially run the whole Mac OS X operating system on your Apple TV. Granted, it will be slightly slower due to the lower processing power, but it is very cool. You can show a lot of videos, pictures, slideshows on your Apple TV and go on the internet and all that stuff. It just adds another use to the Apple TV in my opinion. So further, they talked about these things called advanced technologies. And one of the first things they talked about was timer coalescing. So basically what this means is that when your computer is running, it has a lot of times of idle and a lot of times of activity. So what they did is kind of scrunch those times of activity together so you have more idle time. The result of this is that it reduces your CPU utilization by about 72%. And the result of this is a lot of increased battery life. Also, another one of their advanced technologies is called compressed memory. So essentially what this does is you have a little bit of active memory and a little bit of inactive memory. So what your computer has to do is essentially take out that inactive memory and make it free memory. So what this does is actually scrunches the inactive memory, increases the active memory, and also increases the free memory. So it allows your memory to be utilized better. 
Furthermore, they've also completely changed Safari, and I think it actually looks really cool, though I probably still use Chrome just because I'm so used to it. But for the Safari redesign, they've added a sidebar. So in the sidebar, you can essentially access things like your reading list and bookmarks. And also there's this new thing called shared links, where it's basically integrating social media more into Safari. So it allows you to see links that your friends have shared throughout Twitter, Facebook, or Google Plus, or any of those things. They also emphasize a lot of speed improvements they've done, and they actually benchmarked Safari and showed how much faster it was compared to Chrome and Firefox, which I thought was very interesting but they made improvements to things like JavaScript basically just to increase the speed and also to increase battery life and speed they made it so that Safari actually uses less energy and less memory. Another cool feature in Mac OS X Mavericks is that it has iCloud Keychain. So I don't know if you guys know but in your Mac if you search Spotlight for Keychain Access and it actually has almost every password you've ever typed in into an application on your Mac actually stored. So essentially what iCloud Keychain does is it remembers all of your website logins, your credit card numbers, which is kind of weird, and all of your Wi-Fi network passwords. So this is very cool. You don't have to worry about remembering all of your passwords as much. So you can access all of them from your iCloud Keychain. And also these are safe because they are encrypted and they are synced across all of your devices so you can access them easily. Another thing that they've improved a lot is notifications. So notifications now pops up in the top right your screen and it's very non-intrusive and just shows up a lot better in my opinion and now the apps on your iOS phone that send push notifications can also now send push notifications to your Mac if you allow it personally I hate push notifications most of the time so I usually just disable them but if you rely on them for things like sports and stuff this can be very useful to just like pushing the sports scores to your computer just so it's easier to access and view them Another thing that they've redesigned and improved is the calendar. So the calendar they didn't talk too much about, but it essentially is redesigned a little bit. And also it allows you more functionality by utilizing the uh, location services better and basically just allowing you to integrate the location services and the maps better throughout the calendar. Speaking of maps, they have actually started to integrate more of the maps into OS X Mavericks. So basically what they talked about, it pretty much has the same features as the iOS 6 maps. It has improved flyover, points of location, and turn by turn directions, which in my opinion is nothing new. But they also have something that I thought was really cool. So essentially what you can do is set up a route on your Mac and then you can send that route over to your iOS device. So when you go into your iOS device, you can slide to unlock and then it immediately gives you the directions that you typed in onto your Mac. And the last and final thing, which I don't even know why they didn't do this before, is that they added iBooks to the Mac. So now you can have iBooks to the Mac and you can sync your full library from iOS and essentially everything is the same. There's not too much different. It's just uh, the iBooks that you find on your iPhone, but just made for a computer version of it. So so guys, that's pretty much all it for this video about OSX Mavericks. Now please like and subscribe this video, you can click subscribe down there. And also please check out my other two videos I'm going to be posting either today or tomorrow. I've been working really hard on these, it's taken a lot of time. So I really appreciate you guys just clicking over there and just click the annotation at the end of this video or check out the links in the description if you want to learn more about the new Macs that were released and iOS 7. They're really cool so you should definitely check it out. So thank you for watching and ultimately have a nice day.